Hey guys, I wanted to give you a look behind the scenes at my little workspace, Share Tribe Marketplace. Now, if you want to set one up yourself, maybe in a different niche, maybe the same one, I don't mind at all. But um, you can check out the link in the description if you want to have a 30 day free trial of Share Tribe because it is a great platform for being able to test out your idea and especially in those 30 days, find out if it's something that might have a little bit of traction, have some people being interested. Um, sometimes it can be good to have a working model when you take it to, say, either investors or to actual people who are going to list on the site. And if you say to them, what do you think of this site? Would you list on here? And then if people start signing up, then you know that you've got that little bit of validation to keep going with your idea. So the rationale behind this is an actual space, physical space rental marketplace. Now, if you're looking at doing things like classifieds or auctions for your marketplace, then Share Tribe's probably not the best for you because it doesn't have a cart functionality for the classified and doesn't have an auction functionality for auctions. But if you are looking at renting out space, renting out time, um, even selling services, it's all great for doing that as well. And there's some options around whether you want to have people be able to book on a booking calendar or even just put in a request to um, book something at some time. So the way that I've split this out, we've got listing types. So we have free, paid and barter. And that's going to make more sense in a minute when I show you the categories. So we've got private and co-working spaces. So they're generally going to be paid. Some people might have free first day, but most of them are going to be paid. Then we have commercial, retail, which are generally going to be paid. But you might have some times, and the reason I put in barter was thinking that perhaps people might want to um, rent out, say, an office in their building to, say, a graphic designer, and they might get a half a day worth of graphic design work in exchange for that graphic designer in their space. So that's the reason I had the barter in there as well. So paid and barter would fit into here, and free and public library listings would fit into the free option right there as well. So that's why I chose those categories. We're going to look into all these different settings down the side, but at the moment you can see we have a grid view, we also have a list view, which I generally don't choose. Some people might like that, but I usually go for the grid view being the default and then the map of the world so people could actually click in and find places in their exact location and can see how many listings are in each location as well. Um, across the top, we've got an about page. Now, the about page is kind of one of the main pages that's on here by default. And then we've got the how it works now, I've set up this link myself because it's actually a sub page of about, um, but I just found that sometimes people might want to go straight to that about page. So I put that in there um, and I've got the contact us, which is the default and invite new members, which is a setting that I've put on there as well. Um, some other things to notice that I'll be pointing out is about this like search by name. So you can change this wording around and you can also say whether you want to have a location or not, which is really handy. And you can also change this wording at the top. I've got add workspace, but if you're renting out something else, you know, renting out bikes, it'd be add a bike. Or if it was like renting out tours, it could be like book, I mean, add your tour, um, things like that. So you can change the wording around to suit your particular needs. But what we're going to do, we're going to jump into the admin, which is found by hovering over your profile image and admin dashboard jump on back in. Now I'm not going through everything. I do actually have a course on Udemy that goes through everything in the way to get it set up. But you can see if you've been keeping up with me, quite a few of the details like the name on the front, the wording, that search by name that I was just saying um, are all shown in the back end where you can adjust them. You can also put in a user agreement um, so that's going to be one of the main pages that you change. Also this is where you add in things like logos, the cover photo, this one up here, there's the logo up the top, coming back over here. Um, the favicon is what shows up right up the top in your tab. Uh, you can choose your colors, They've got a color picker, links through to if you want to find out what color you want to use or you might have some branding ones. You can choose some default displays and you can add in some custom scripts. So I think this one I might have actually thrown in to verify the domain for Google Analytics or Webmasters. Um, so design ones, one that you're going to be updating yourself. Um, some of these are just some pretty basic settings, but if we get down to listing categories, 
you can see here we've got those three categories that I've chosen. Now fields and filters. In terms of categories as well, just keep in mind that people can list their one listing in one category. So if they've got multiple listings, then it would have to go across, um, sorry, multiple categories. They'd actually have to make one listing per category. So to put this in context, if you did actually have a space that was a business running inside a co-working space that was also a business space that was within a library. So it kind of fitted into all of these. You would actually have to put into just the one category, like one of those categories or create three listings to put across here. So um, just something to keep in mind. You can only put them into one category. Um, now listing fields and filters. One of the well, I'll probably say two of the main reasons that you would have listing fields and filters. If we jump back over here. Now, if I wanted to find a spot that's only available, business hours, low noise, has air conditioning and has coffee. I click this. Let's see if anyone pops up. There you go. So that's probably narrowed down my choices here of the ones that I want. So narrowing down choices is a big one. The next thing that it does is super useful is that within the description for each of these listings, rather than have everyone write like free write and say, you know, we've got air conditioning, natural light, space for groups, meeting room, dedicated desks, you can actually just have them select those down the bottom here. And they might say, you know, we've got coffee, tea and snacks. But instead of that, they can click here. It helps with the filtering, but also helps to cut down the description so that you're only putting in the information that you need to have, which is super handy. So that's the reasons for the listing fields and filters. Um, and they do look slightly different on the front, depending on what you choose. So uh, we've got a slider one here. We've got some kind of drop down boxes. Um, check boxes. So drop down boxes is just where you're going to have one choice that you can select. And then there's like a checkbox group where you can actually have multiple choices in there. Um, and there's some that's just text and some number ones that can end up being sliders on the front here like this. So you can play around with those and make it fit your marketplace perfectly. Uh, now that Close to the last one, we're getting near the end. Um, but in terms of order types, if we go to say paid, I'll click on here. Now paid, we've got an option for people being able to add a price to the listing, but they can also accept payments online. So if you want to actually have them pay through the service, you click on this box for the paid ones. Um, and then if you want them to manage their bookings through a calendar, um, then you'll select this one. So that'll come down to whether in your value proposition, you're actually having the person's going to be using your calendar as their central booking calendar. Now that's going to depend on the marketplace about whether people generally have their own calendar set up with a whole lot of bookings coming from somewhere else. Um, that can be really hard to coordinate if you're trying to use this calendar rather than the other one. Um, so just keep that in mind and maybe ask some of your customers about what they're using for calendars. And if no one uses calendars, then this could be an option. Um, you could even set up one type that's like paid and then one that's like paid and brackets with online booking. And so people have the option of listing in the paid or listing in the paid with online booking. And one of them you could check the box, the other one you don't check the box. Uh, now in terms of pricing units, we've got per hour, day, week, month. I also wanted per fortnight and a half day. So you can click this button here to add those in. Uh, and that just means it's a drop down option for people when they go to choose that payment system. Uh, I think I've gone for Stripe on this one. We've got Stripe and PayPal. We've got some instructional text so that when people um, have signed up, I've just got a pretty basic one. Um, but then at the bottom, if they need more info, it does link out to the About Us and How It Works page, um, which is just like you kind of don't want people left on a blankish page so if they get onto this page they can click there and move through to the next spot of discovering how this whole thing works. Uh, we've got emails down the bottom here so the email content that goes out now for me I've got like a thanks for joining um, a little refresher on you know about the marketplace let's dive in I've now I've done it in a question and answer format I just found like it's pretty short and to the point like where do I go to search? How do I book one? And then 
the very last one. So I've definitely gone more towards the people who are like the buyers on the site. And then the last one's kind of the sellers. How do I list my cafe or co-working space? Sign up here. Um, and I've kept the writing pretty light, professional, but with some personality um, in here. So that's how I've set this up. Uh, and then the final one that we've got down here is just the settings page where you can go in and change things like if you want miles or kilometers. If you want just the keyword, search up the top or see up here, search by name or location, keyword and location. You can also do things like when it's going to be marked close, how often people get a, a newsletter. I usually go for weekly on that one. Um, the only other thing that you're going to probably find quite interesting in the settings is around the users being verified by admin. Um, that can be really handy in some marketplaces where you may want to charge, say, a monthly fee for people to be able to list on your site. So if you click this one, what will happen is people can sign up. All the buyers can sign up and contact people and it's all happy. Um, but if you click that, then anyone who tries to sign up that hasn't had their profile verified, um, they won't actually be able to list on the site. So you have to manually verify them. So some people can kind of work around the monthly subscription. So if I said, you know, for $20 per month, you can list your workspace on our site. Um, you would click onto here uh, and then you can change the actual email, t the text that shows up on the um, user verification page, like kind of in the instructions text section. You just change it around to say that, um, you want the people have to go to say another payment page to be able to pay the monthly fee and then you'll get an email notification through your payment processor <laughs> hopefully you're not getting lost in the way that I'm saying this but um, you can set up some other payment processor so that that processes the monthly fee and then you get the notification you jump on in here you find the user you mark them as verified then they can start posting listings so it's a little bit of a manual workaround but it's still a good way of being able to collect monthly payments instead of having to do a percentage of commission so i hope that gives you a good rundown of this kind of marketplace some of the things that I chose to put in there, the kind of style and look of the marketplace and some of the settings that I've used. Feel free to reach out if you've got any questions.